Hello, in the earlier video, we discussed about how data is collected for statistical analysis. In this video, we are going to look at some practical applications of concepts like range, mean, median and mode that are used in statistical analysis. Coming up in a moment. Stay tuned. I'm Shreesh and welcome to another video on statistics for beginners from Learning Puri, a channel for applied learning. On this channel, I share with you tips and tutorials on data science, business management, marketing and personal development. We will begin with the concept of some statistical measures with some real life illustrations intertwined with it. This should provide you with a fair understanding of why and where such measures should or could be utilized. We know that statistics is all about numerical data that has a variety of response. Statistical analysis can be categorized into two types as descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. We will leave the latter for discussion in a separate video. In descriptive statistics, if we wanted to provide an on an average response or a middle of the road response, we would be trying to gauge the central tendency of the data. Let's say someone was interested in knowing how you are feeling at various times of the day during our waking hours on a predefined scale. Let's say the scale ranged from 1 to 5 with very tired being represented by 1 on one end to very lively being represented by 5 on the other with neutral being the middle state. Let's assume our waking hours typically would range from 6 in the morning till 10 at night. That makes up for 16 hours. We will take readings every 1 to 2 hours using the scale defined earlier we get the following data for one person on a weekday. Let's focus our attention only on the response. Once we arrange it, we get the following set of nine figures. Now, if someone was to ask you, how was your day today? What would your answer be, especially with a variety of responses through the day? To help you out, we will make a few observations here. The responses range from one to five, which indicates variety of response. The range of the data is difference between the maximum value of 5 and a minimum value of 1. Certain responses are repeated through the day. Such a scenario calls for taking an average of these responses. Here is where we calculate the arithmetic mean or simply the mean of the data. During these observations, we have also defined the range of the data. To calculate the mean, we will rearrange the data and carry out the following calculation like so. This yields us the arithmetic mean or mean, which in our case comes to 3, which indicates that the person had a neutral day. Broadly speaking, when we have a variety in response and there is a repetition for each response and we need to take the average, we could rely on the arithmetic mean. You will often see this measure that is mean being used in describing a batsman's strike rate in cricket. Now that we've understood the mean, let's look at another scenario. During a population census, the income of the individual is captured. Here, we get wide spectrum of responses. The population consists of unskilled workers like packers, farm workers who get paid daily wages. Skilled professionals who are high value taxpayers earn in 100,000 a month. Responses across individuals is varied. A person who earns 200 daily cannot be compared with a person earning 20,000 daily. Let's look at an arithmetic mean of the following two cases. In the first case, most of the values are around 1500. And in the second case, they are around 300. However, the extreme value of 20,000 pulls the average or the mean far high up than the major repetitive responses in both cases. In such cases, we define the average using a median. We calculate the median as below. First, arrange the responses in an ascending order. Then, Identify the value or values where about half of the responses are above and below that value. If the total number of responses is odd, then it is the middle value in the group. If total number of responses is even, then we take the arithmetic average of the middle two values like we have done here. In above two cases, we see that the median provides a better representation of mid value or the average. So having gained a reasonable perspective on median, let's look at the last measure that is the mode. We often come across literature that suggests that mode is not used often, suggesting that it has no use. But then let's examine the following case. We have a retailer of shoes. He wants to know what shoe sizes he needs to stock for a design. We have seen earlier that me may not be of use since that might result in a single value flavored by sizes with the highest sale. 
it may ignore the other shoe sizes. A similar case of single dominant size being chosen may occur when using a median. Such situations call for working out the mode. It is a very useful measure when we want to look at multiple average values. Let's examine the following data set of shoe sizes versus their corresponding sales. We see that mean yields us the value 29 which is close to size 10. Median yields us the value 17 which corresponds to size 5 or 10. However, we see that the maximum sales are for sizes 7, 8 and 9. To calculate mode, we identify the shoe sizes most frequently sold which is 60. This is for sizes 7 and 9. This is a case for multiple modes. The retailer can take a decision in favor of sizes 7, 8 and 9 as well. And in doing so, he won't be incorrect. Since these are the highest selling sizes. Now he can take a subjective call for the other sizes and eliminate sizes 6 and 11. He may want to retain sizes 4, 5 and 10 to observe their sales and arrive at a decision on them later on. This way he eliminates slow moving stock and creates space for the hotter items. Mode is a very useful measure to employ in such business scenarios. A point to note is that it's not necessary that you should always end up with multiple mode situations. However, this is a possibility and this should definitely be explored. So, in a nutshell, mean, median and mode work well in specific scenarios. The onus lies on the statistician or the analyst to choose the right measure for better decision making. The choice, however, should be made post observing the data carefully. Further, we've also seen that these three measures provide a summary of the data set. Hence, they are also called as summary statistics. Trust, now you have a better practical understanding of the three measures, which is mean, median and mode. There will be a follow up video to this, wherein I will be demonstrating how these three measures can be calculated using R. If you like this video, click the like button below. If you're new here, consider subscribing, click on the subscribe button and do not forget to click the notification bell to get notified of further such videos that get published. And as always, stay healthy, stay peaceful.